the JAMA Network. I'm Lee Jan Paul. I'm the Lewis Feinberg Professor of Ophthalmology at Northwestern University. I'm also the chair of the Diabetic Retinopathy Clinical Research Network, which is a research network funded by the National Institutes of Health to study clinical trials in diabetic retinopathy. The incidence of diabetic uh, changes in the body is increasing, particularly in the retina. And we're very concerned about the development of diabetic retinopathy and progression to loss of vision. In the face of this obesity epidemic and the rising incidence of diabetes, it's very important that the patients go to their doctors and have diabetic retinopathy detected. But our research is focused on treatments for the diabetic retinopathy once it's detected. In this particular study, we went after the proliferative diabetic retinopathy, which is the more advanced stages. These are the changes that progress to vitreous hemorrhage, to traction on the retina, distortion of the vision and retinal detachment. And that can lead to total blindness in many patients. So we were interested in investigating a new treatment for treatment of proliferative diabetic retinopathy. The patients had to have proliferative retinopathy documented in at least one eye. They had to have good vision and they were then randomized into two different treatments. It's a five-year study but the results we're reporting now are the two-year outcomes which is the primary outcome of the study. We're comparing the treatment that's been available for 40 years, namely panretinal photocoagulation, versus anti-VEGF injections into the eye. We know that VEGF is a mediator of proliferative diabetic retinopathy, and it made sense that inhibitors of VEGF might cause regression of the proliferative retinopathy and might give similar or even better outcomes to the scatter photocoagulation that we've done for the last 40 years. We entered over 300 patients, close to 400 eyes. They were randomly assigned to either panretinal photocoagulation or to anti-VEGF injections. Interestingly, only a very small percentage of the patients that were receiving the anti-VEGF injections required laser later on, whereas a large number of the patients who were getting the laser required the injections to control their edema or their proliferative disease. As time went on, it became apparent that the group being treated with the injection was non-inferior to the standard treatment, panretinal photocoagulation. What we found was that actually there was slight superiority to the injection group over two years. They had better vision, although the two-year endpoint was not statistically significant. But when we looked at the time course over the two years, we call this the area under the curve, we found that the injections were better, statistically better than, than the standard photocoagulation. In addition, we found that um, one of the bad side effects of panretinal photocoagulation is loss of peripheral vision and also loss of dark adaptation. We found that the injection group had almost no loss of uh, peripheral vision compared to the laser group, which had a very important loss of peripheral vision. Uh, we also found that the group that was, were receiving the injections had less need for surgical intervention, called vitrectomy, had less vitreous hemorrhages, and had less development of swelling of the back of the eye. We call that diabetic macular edema. So in all those aspects, the group receiving the injections as a group were doing better than the group that was receiving the panretinal photocoagulation. After two years, we have shown that, that we're non-inferior with the injection technique. And in many aspects, there's a superiority to the injections over the panretinal photocoagulation. We have 40 years experience with the laser and we only have recent new experience with the injection. So this is a five-year study. We'll be seeing if the benefit of the injections is persists or improves over the next three years and that's a very important part. In addition, we're planning a study uh, where we're giving less frequent injections than in this study to see if we can maintain or prevent the development of proliferative diabetic retinopathy. Patients at an earlier stage would receive a diminished number of these injections, and we'll see if they are protected against the more severe complications.